Hello everybody and welcome to Cookies and Contracts. My name is Nick Ward. I'm a senior loan officer with Homefront Mortgage. And this is Carla Stoddard with Remax. So pretty much we sit here every week and we talk about food. We eat some great food that Carla cooks for us and then we talk about what's going on in the world, some mortgage products or just a real estate topic. Um, so Carla, what do, you, what do we got? What are we eating today? Oh, today we're having cinnamon buns. Uh, according to some of my friends are actually better than cinnamon. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I agree with that or not, but I, um, mm -hmm. I have my own grated cinnamon. I handmade the icing mm -hmm. out of cream cheese, um, butter, milk, and of course sugar. Put a dash of cinnamon in that as well. Mm -hmm. And I topped it with the common. Good stuff, leftover pecans from the, the cake, right? Um, yeah, I actually made two of this cakes that we had last week. I made one for us, mm -hmm. and then I made one a few days later for the 4th of July, and I pounded out a bunch of pecans. Actually, I have my mom pounded out a bunch of pecans. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not hard. We got one of those mallets for cracking crabs. Perfect. Put them in a bag, and I told mom, I don't want dust. Do not use your nut grinder because I don't want <laughs> dust. I want little tiny chunks. Yeah. So we have to do it manually. And it's very easy, so bang, 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 bang. Perfect. Makes her happy. These yeah. are good. Those came out good. Just that uh, little yeah. bit of pecan, a little different flavor. Yes, I am. Um, my, my son adores my cinnamon bones. My mother adores my cinnamon bones. Yeah, so it is what it is. So what do we uh, what do we talk about? Like you said, you mentioned for sale by owners in that process. And what oh, that yes. Does. Uh, yeah. It's always entertaining. Um, I call them FISBOs, for sale by owner. I think a lot of Asian calls them FISBOs. Um, it's not illegal to have a for sale by owner in real estate. Oh, yeah. Um, but a lot of people think and actually underestimate what a realtor does. Oh, exactly. Right, exactly. Yeah, on both as the situation. Mm -hmm. So, you know, let's say you're a buyer and you find this house as being for, as for sale by owner. You still might want to have your own agent, okay? There is a lot that we bring to the process. For instance, start with the appraisal. Let's say you're looking at the house. The owner says, I want $500,000 for this property. Mm -hmm. Okay, and in today's market, you know, prices aren't elevated. However, during the appraisal process, because unless you have cash, you have a loan. Mm -hmm. And during that appraisal process, the uh, appraiser comes back to the bank and says, guess what? This house is only worth $350,000, $400,000. Phew. Okay. Now, you're in danger of losing your home. Mm hmm Don't that you want to buy. Not even getting approved for the loan, because if the... If the if bank can't get their money back out of that, exactly. they're not going to loan it. Exactly. And it's just that simple. Now, if you have enough money in cash, hard cash, to make it work best possible, However, you know, if the house is only worth, we'll say $400,000, why would you want to pay five hundred dollars to begin with? Exactly. Uh, okay. Exactly. Some people call this a tidewater situation. Um, as a realtor, I'd be getting in touch with the other agent and saying, hey, guess what? Uh, okay. A lot of times, the property will be brought down in value. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The uh, negotiations, you know, without, without negotiations. having the realtor, the, the buyer, or the seller to represent you. I mean, yeah, this that's is on you. Me. That's that you have to do the negotiations yourself, the yeah. paperwork, all the compliance. And, and that's all on top of the everyday stuff. Yep. Yeah, because as soon as you sign that contract, okay, you now have a timeline. Mm -hmm. You have to have certain things done in a certain process, certain times. I think we talked about it before. Yep. But let's talk about it again. Uh, you're going to have the same compliance. You know, you're, you're giving somebody money to hold the property. It's the, it's the hold the agreement together. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, it's earnest money. Yeah, I, I, I want to buy this house, here's earnest money. Yeah. Okay, you can lose your earnest money for a lot of things. Not being able to negotiate repairs adequately. Um, that's a biggie. Another one is if you're not in compliance. If you're supposed to have your inspection done, we'll say in 20 days, it better be done 
Mm. If you try to negotiate repairs, there's like a time frame that you can do this. If you're not in compliance and you say, hey, I'm going to get repairs done, not only do they not necessarily have to do those repairs, if you say, well, you don't have to repair them on walking, guess what? You lost your honest money. Yeah. Now, um, because you didn't follow the contract. I once described uh, this whole procedure as a three ring circus. Mm -hmm. And as the buyer's agent, I'm the ringmaster. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So I have to keep all the balls in the air. And all kinds of things can pop up. You can have tie quarter, you can have repair negotiations. Um, any one of a million things. Let's say it's an investment property being sold and there's tenants living there. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, it can be very pleasant trying to get, yeah, just get into it, yep. take a look. You know, um, sometimes tenants don't want to move and they make life very difficult for the sellers. Exactly. And they do have rights. So it, it can be very entertaining. Yeah, and with all this NER settlement, lawsuit stuff going on, just being compliant is big, you know, and if you're selling a house or buying a house and you're missing these deadlines, it's business. You're going to get tossed to the side and the next offer may be the one and there you go, you lose your house. And your EMD. And your money and your time. Especially you know. for the, well, I'll tell you, you, you I encourage people to take the time of buying a house. Oh, yeah. Look at things, know what you're getting into as much as possible. That's the house. If that's the one that checks all your boxes and you're trying to buy it on your own or yeah. sell it on your own, it, but it's just... A lot of people walking away from their earnest money that they have to walk away by house. Yeah, yeah. Cash. Cash gone for a fantasy. For a situation that, you know, could have been avoided had you hired the right person or done the right process or had the right documentation. Yes. You know, it's... it's... And, and here's another thing. Let's, let's flip the situation around. You're selling your property and you do not have a listing agent. That's entertainment. Oh yeah, because you gotta price it, you gotta market it, you gotta, you know, these sites, these MLSs, I'm sure you gotta pay for listing mm -hmm. on there, Zillow, you pay for all that, and, you know, and that's where working with a realtor, you guys have subscriptions and access to this that you can list it that you already paid for, so. Well, there's more to it than that. There's, it's also keeping in compliance. That's yeah. It's really so, paying for things. Um, but here's a situation. Let's say you're in that tide water situation. A listing agent can often, depending on what's going on, at least talk to the appraiser. Why is this not appraising? Mm -hmm. Okay, they can argue the comps. Wait yep. a minute, the next door house is it's like literally a couple hundred feet away, sold for X amount of dollars. What is the difference between that property, which is mm -hmm. three bedrooms and a garage, and this property, which is three bedrooms and a garage? Yep. It may be something simple. It may be, hey, this property has an extra bathroom and a really well thought out kitchen. Okay? That would make a difference. But if you don't have access to the comps, mm -hmm. then you don't have access to argue. Yep. Um, okay? And it may be you can get adjustments, but sometimes you can't. Okay? Now, you know, the appraiser basically works for the bank, not for anybody else. Mm -hmm. you know? They're still not making sure the bank make their money. Uh, but understand that an appraisal is a professional opinion. Yep. And everything's based from there. So, you know, if you're not an agent and you're in this situation, do you know how to approach the bank and say, hey, we think this is a problem mm -hmm. and this is why? Um, if you don't know how to do that, you just cut your nose off to your face. Pretty much, you're just okay. potentially leaving money on the table is yeah. what you're saying. If you don't, if you're not experienced in selling or buying a house on your own, don't do it on your own because you're gonna pay more, lose more, potentially lose out on cash in your pocket, or potentially you know miss a step, miss a document, and, and lose the house in general. Yeah. I mean, and, and quite frankly, you know, the listing agent when when you put a house in the MLS. You're reaching, reaching out to a lot more people, mm -hmm. okay? And on average, you know, when we do the professional pictures and the marketing, overall, let's say, you know, a for sale by owner, they often undercut themselves. They actually err on the side of losing money. Mm -hmm. Losing agents kind of eliminate that. In fact, yeah, it can be argued that we earn 
in about 10%, maybe even up to 15% more value when you're getting that house sold than you would selling it by yourself. So if you have a $300,000 house and you're selling it for sale by owner, chances are you're going to market it and get maybe 285, whereas the Asian, even after paying the fees and whatnot, is getting more like 320, 325, exactly. which means you're netting maybe 315. Exactly. So at the end of the day, our common theme that we have in these conversations is, is hire a professional, whether it's one of us or someone that you trust. Don't make these big decisions on your own. You know, the, you're just costing yourself thousands and potentially making thousands if you make the right phone call and have the right person on your team. Absolutely. I mean, we can go back on every different episode and that's the theme. If you don't have the right people on your team, you're, you're, you're missing out. Yes, absolutely. And, you know, when you're buying a home, you know, let's face it, that is, for most people, the most expensive purchase of the lifetime. Okay. Um, you know, last time I checked, I was not a billionaire. So, you know, for me buying a house, you know, I really got to be careful what I'm buying, how I'm buying it. I general rule of thumb for most people. Yep. Uh, quite frankly, having your I's dotted and your T's crossed, it's basically you're saving money on repairs. Um, you're saving money on tight water situations. Um, you're, you're you have a better idea of what you're getting into. Exactly. A good agent can go over that inspection report with exactly. you and say, hey, you know, and generally speaking, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Yes. I have a client, um, she uh, sent me an email today and said, hey, Carla, look at this property. But they don't have a lot of pictures. And this client is on a budget like everybody else in the world. You know, no shame in that. <laughs> But she looked at a property that was condemned. Okay, the, the actual city where this property is located condemned the building. Yep. True. So hypothetically, if she didn't have a realtor to reach out to and ask those questions to her, send that property to her, just as another set of eyes, worst case scenario, she goes out there, you know. You know, chances are she would walk, walk over to the property and say, oh, wait a minute, you know. Hopefully. 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 Okay. Uh, I, yeah, that same property, I have somebody who's looking to invest, and these people, they tear houses down to the foundation if need be and rebuild. So, so I sent them that property because basically what, they're, what the owner is actually asking for is the price of land. Mm -hmm. It's sitting on a little bit better than an acre. Uh -huh. In the location, location, location. Yes, yeah. an acre inside city limits in any city. Yep, that's okay. going to be some potential money there. So, so yeah. yeah. So that's what he's doing. He's selling for the land. Yeah, I mean, he's looking for either an investor or somebody who has enough cash they can buy it outright. And then what you do is use the land to secure the loan to rebuild the yeah. house or whatever. Every situation is different. You yeah, know, every situation is different. Just having a realtor to say, hey, here it is. So that's exactly. Different. Yeah, just having a good team, making sure you got the right people on your team and asking those questions. Don't be afraid to ask questions. You know, it's your money. It's a big deal. It's a big decision. Absolutely. You know, you want to make sure you, you have all the information. And uh, don't go for sale by owner. Just give us a call. Have a good day, everyone. Take care, Happy guys. Happy Fourth of July. Yes. Happy Fourth of July.